Thomas Pyre is studying molecular biology at the University of Bochum and completed his postgraduate studies in immunology at the University of Ulm in 1993. Since then, he's worked in the pharmaceutical industry in different roles in drug development at cl clinical research um, organizations, focusing on a therapeutic area, CNS, and infectious diseases. Since joining Grunenthal in the year 2000, he has been managing clinical trials and projects in contraception, infectious diseases, and pain, and pain-related areas like anesthesiology. Take it away. Thank you. Yeah, um, first, I would like to thank you all so that you're here, especially you guys. Um, we are used to talk to patients since a few years. I will come later to that. And it's always really refreshing and gives me personally, um, let's say, the motivation why I'm still working in the industry. So because my colleagues from the industry will support me in telling that this is really a challenging environment, so we are under pressure. But here, at least trying to help you is my motivation. OK. Um, thank you. Um, unfortunately, I have to tell you that I will tell you nothing new. <laughs> because what you heard during the whole day, so it's, it's simply a summary So what I can give. And maybe I'm a little bit more provocative um, than other people. So I would simply talk about so where I'm coming from when I started in the industry and where we are now, at least where we are at Grunenthal. OK, that's the agenda. Forget about this. Um, yeah, so where we are. So just a short introduction into Grunenthal. So we are not as big as Pfizer, but we would like to buy you. <laughs> but um, no, so we are a very small, small mid-sized pharmaceutical company. So you see here a green valley. If you translate the German wording, so literally into English, it's green valley. So, um, and we are coming from a green valley. So that's the reason why it's called Grund. Um, we are globally, so everything what is here green um, is Gruntal. So dark green means there we have affiliates, um, production plants. Light green means we are working with partners. Um, that's the important thing. Um, as you can imagine, our main focus is pain. So that's where we are coming from since yeah, the beginning, almost, uh, where the company was founded. Um, we managed to uh, try to get pain drugs on the market. Um, for those who are long term in the field, so Tramadol is one of our famous compounds still on the market. Um, and no, no. Nevertheless, um, as well related to pain, um, inflammation, because there's a direct link. So you have pain if you have inflammation. Um, here we are mainly in, in research and development. Um, and of course, of course, I think um, this is, let's say, the hype in the industry, I would say. So we are looking now into rare indications, rare conditions, um, pain, diseases. OK, what do I mean with second-hand information? Um, it was already touched um, from the beginning onwards. So um, therefore, I need to start, um, again, what is the clinical trial? And we heard it as well in the beginning. Yeah, we have to deal with guinea pigs. It's an experiment, everything. Um, it's a conscious experiment where we need to get information about a disease, about drug and the efficacy and the safety of the drug. <coughs> and conscious, yes. Um, what does it mean? So if you're a scientific person, like I was more than, yeah, obviously 30 years ago, um, I had an idea and I put it into practice. So saying, okay, this is my experiment, I will do this. And clinical research is completely different. So we need a protocol, a design, we need a plan, we have to make our estimations, our hypothesis, just to determine the outcome, which makes it a little bit complicated because you have to standardize a lot. And unfortunately, um, we are not free. Um, so we do this based on literature. We have guidances in place, laws, and as well. And in the past, we did it really from a drawing board. Um, so it was there, so there was a guideline. Um, a standard of care, and we put it into a protocol. 
And this leads in complex protocols. Correct me if I'm wrong. So we are asking many questions, um, at least for us. So we work with diaries, questionnaires. Um, if you are a patient, you will be overwhelmed or with questionnaires about your condition, your mood, your suicide tendency, whatever you can imagine, we will bring to you and put this onto you. So um, that's the, the tricky stuff. Um, and lots of investigations, especially when you're in early phases. We have several questions we need to answer. But where are you as a patient? Um, so you are defined. So sorry for that. The guinea pig is clearly defined. You have to be healthy, but you have... So in the worst case, you have to be healthy. You have to have a certain condition and nothing else. Um, and you have to participate. Um, and that's the challenge. So we can't find you. Um, yes, definitely. So some studies suffer from that, that the patients simply are so strict defined that we cannot find them because simply based on our basic knowledge in the past and recently. Um, but you are the one who <coughs> has simply to provide the data. So yes, there's a physician in between, but as well, um, you are the one who providing us with the information that we need. Okay, and what do we know about you? Yes, everything. The literature, treatment guidelines, um, personal experience within the company, um, external subject matter experts. Um, you have heard the word key opinion leaders, so the guys who are really working in the field, so they have some experience. Um, yeah. But never ever so we do not consider the patient. Um, yeah, and that's, let's say, the paradigm of the pharmaceutical industry. So where I was grown up, um, don't contact the patient because that's the anonymous person behind. So it's really da a dangerous, sorry for doing that. It's really a dangerous um, yeah, person which you, or individual which you not con should not contact um, just to keep you anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, sounds weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> definitely we do not, nothing do not know nothing about you. Um, and I'm really provocative here. So of course we know more, but it's, it's nothing which is really, yeah, as Amy said this morning, so nothing based on data, on clear data. We have something heard through the grapevine, our patient feels in that way, that way. We talk to investigators and physicians, what they think, what is the best for you. Um, okay. Just as a little excuse. So where I was coming from, so we did not have the internet. Um, we had really difficulties to get these data. Um, so therefore, um, as I said, we have to keep the patient really anonymous. But yes, we had an excuse, um, but we find a solution. Um, and now we'll Taking, picking, or building that picture. Um, and as you heard during the whole day, so the paradigm has changed. So we're getting more and more patient entity. So my colleague from Pfizer showed, um, yeah, systems that we use um, as well within the organization. Unfortunately, Gruenthal is a small company, so we cannot invest such a huge amount of money or resources in that. But nevertheless, uh, we do something else. Um, and we try to find really access to patients. Um, in 2010, um, after being 10 years with Grunenthal um, and approximately 14 years in the industry, I met the first patient face to face um, in the company. Um, it sounds weird. I had before opportunities to meet patients because I started really in the industry as a CRA. These are the guys who are just managing the sites. And I had a nice investigator who just introduced me to a patient. Say, look, this is the guy. You can ask him questions, how they feel, get some really insights with that. But this was a very, very rare occasion. So it never happens again to me. By the way, it was 
a lady completely different, so not of interest for Grunenthal. It was a Parkinson patient who just tells us about her journey. Um, and in 2010, we started at Grunenthal activities um, to do that, what we are currently doing here. Um, seeing patients, having a close contact to them, understand specifically what their needs are. Not in a yeah, really planned way, but you have a disease, we have a potential drug, let's discuss what you feel and what you're doing. Um, and this is, let's say, a sum, summary. So um, I think, yeah, chronic neuropathic pain, I've heard this um, today at least, um, chronic regional pain syndrome, um, yeah, as well. So, what do we have at Grunenthal? We have a group of patients, it's a little bit more than a handful, where we are in constant contact. So, yes, these are more professional patients um, in the positive way. Um, they are engaged um, and they are able to deal with us and give us feedback in their specific condition. And we can use them in case we need, let's say, a specific protocol. We can discuss this with them, so with our teams. So, and these are the questions we have to them. So what are their expectations? Um, there was a discussion about the placebo effect. Placebo effect is mainly linked to expectations. Um, and this is really a difficult thing to manage. How um, is the daily life impacted? Um, what does your condition do with you personally? Um, and what is the process of diagnosis? And now I would switch to something not different, but to approach. We started three years ago, thought about a program in diseases with high medical need. Unfortunately, I'm not transparent here. Um, so there is no experience at Grunthal, neither really in, in the community which deals with clinical trials. You will not find specific trials, just, let's say, some academic research, um, no basic information. There's no standard care and no therapy. And another problem was, so we have a big program, a big program in a rare disease, where we simply need to understand where do we find patients, what drives them, are they willing to participate in a clinic, in a clinical trial, <clears throat> and yeah, can we conduct this program in a trial? Sounds very, let's say, technical, um, but I will give you some insight here as well. Okay, so we had a collaboration with Clarinus at that point of time. Um, they were firefighting for us. Um, because we had problems in the clinical trial to recruit patients. I wouldn't say as always, but in 90% of the cases. Um, and then we come into discussion and say, okay, what can we do to avoid such a firefighting situation? Um, and yeah, so there's the internet, um, and we do an online survey. Where I was immediately scared, I think two days later, Niels come back to me and said, okay, we know where we find those subjects and what they are doing, or how they are approaching the internet. So one group um, was using mobile devices, the other one was using um, desktop computers, and the other one was using um, tablet PCs or tablets. Honestly, I'm scared because in, within two days, um, getting this information um, was quite, quite interesting and challenging. Um, and if you know the indications, you know why they are using different things. So. But that's it. Um, so we create um, a questionnaire. I was unfortunately yesterday not here, so to see how you create such a survey. Um, we sit together with Clarinas, with our colleagues, my medic colleagues, um, our operational people, to raise some interesting questions which we think helps us to develop um, a protocol. And this is just, let's say, um, a few questions out of roughly 40 um, items that we asked. 
And what we found out, or what we have seen is as well, let's say, the patient journey um, during this progress. So the first one is a simple thing. We did it in the US um, and in Europe, so the five big countries. Just keep these questions into mind. And as a surprise, we get data, really data, from 3,500 patients within three weeks. Um, pharmaceutical company, enterprise, time is money. Um, that helps us a lot to shape our protocol. And this is not surprising, but it shows you um, how you really can shape your protocol. Because what we find out is that 90% of the patients have the symptoms, but not the diagnosis. That's what you are telling me. And so, yes, we have a journey. We do not know what we have. I have no clear diagnosis. I cannot name it. Um, but that means for us as, as a company, yes, we have to, to re reshape our inclusion criteria because we cannot ask for a specific diagnosis. We have to ask for symptoms and perform the diagnosis during the course of the trial. So now, and if imagine, so we have, let's say, in the UK, 10,000 subjects, and we are looking for 100 of them. But 90% do not know that they have a diagnosis. And then you get only 10% of them. We are not globally distributed in the UK. So this is a challenge to find those subjects, if you have the clear, clear proportion here. And as well, as we are a pain company, we would like to understand how long are you suffering from that specific pain. In this so yes, 30% more than five years. So that was this morning as well, how we understand um, the cause of the disease. 25% um, between three and four years. And 30% six months to two years. And here it comes into force that we have some definitions for chronic pain. You have to suffer from a pain for more than three months, then it qualifies for the term chronic. So, yeah, it, it's, it sounds weird, um, but it's a definition. And if you would like to get a drug in this indication, chronic pain, you simply have to follow this, this, this rule. Um, and that tells you as well a little bit and now I'm boring, let's say, my colleagues from the industry because they know this, but um, <laughs> that tells you how restricted we are sometimes. So we cannot get out of, let's say, these parameters because we simply have to follow them. And what we find out is as well that this condition hurts a lot, obviously. So if we use scales, um, I think I'm between um, zero and 10, um, to define, let's say, subject fee, the pain. And let's talk about, let's say, the patient's journey. Um, I think for everybody of us, it's not new. So to get a diagnosis in a, let's say, not very prominent disease, it takes time to get it. So many people visited more than four doctors. Um, and we are really was surprised a little bit um, that no pain specialist performed the diagnosis. It was done in a completely different area. So as well, gives us hints, where can we place such a clinical trial? So not the pain clinic, the other specialty. And we would like to understand during the patient journey, so what do they use for their treatment? Here it's dominantly um, <clears throat> a topical treatment um, as well um, oral treatment. Hmm. Again, um, this is the US in Europe. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it really at the end. Um, so what we could find out here, so where do we have hot spots? Um, meaning where are many patients um, 
that are willing to participate in a clinical trial. So this helps us as well um, to identify, let's say, potential locations and potential sites. No, but if you look at the US, so it seems it's West Coast? No, East Coast. East Coast, yeah. So, and of course we are interested to understand whether these patients would like to participate in the clinical trial. And 50% of the diagnosed patients would consider participation. We give them as well information about a clinical trial, what does it mean? Um, and again. Questions? Yeah. Can you go back to that, that slide? So because that's very interesting. So I, w I was, you know, one question that came to my mind was like, when was this survey conducted? You know, and there might be, you know, is there any seasonal influence? You know, so, you know, in the West Coast versus the East Coast, you know, and, um, and we know winter, you know, for certain pain conditions, yeah, you know, yes. makes it worse, so right? It's, so it's, it's not, uh, <laughs> um, so definitely there's no influence. Um, no correlation. No correlation to, to summer winter here. Um, and it was done 2015, 16, so end of 2015. So that gives you as well a hint so how long we take to prepare sometimes. So we shaped our protocol. Um, and that's, I have to admit, for Grunthal, something quite new because we are coming, let's say, from, from that world where we define a protocol, talk to key opinion leader, to some physicians, and then we say, okay, this is final, and put it into practice. Um, the unfortunate news, it's still complex um, because of the disease itself. Um, the fortunate news is that we can directly approach patients that are committed or consented to be contacted in case we do a clinical trial. So it's just, a re I wouldn't say rewarding, that's not the right word, but just um, to engage patients, say, deliver data, and then we are coming back and say, hey guys, you are suffering from the disease, and there's something which might help you. Um, talking about the placebo effect, so this is the wrong word, and which might help you. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the case. Okay. Um, you remember, we talked about a huge program in a rare disease. Um, here we were not sure, can we do this program? Is it possible to do this in appropriate time? Um, and we go, in this case, with a similar approach, but for a global question, a global survey. So, of course, global um, is a little bit overwhelming, so we are not um, going to, everything what is gray um, was part of the survey, and what is in yellow, we exclude. And this was really impressive. We did not expect to get that feedback um, within that time frame. So 95,000 patients completed that questionnaire. Um, it was really, yeah. <coughs> And again, so it's illegible, my apologizes, but we could really point out the journey um, of a patient from where they're coming, which symptoms, um, which diagnosis, what was the cause of the yeah, pain, um, which healthcare professionals are there, um, which treatment did they get and take um, as well, how satisfied um, they are with a participant, sorry, um, and would they like to participate um, in a clinical trial? Can I just ask a question? Yes, of course. Can I ask what the exclusion reason was for the countries that were excluded? On what basis? Just thinking a bit from a patient um, perspective. So. Yeah, the question is what, what was the basis for the exclusion cri criteria for the country? So, if I say globally, and we, of course, exclude South Africa, we exclude India, um, and partially Latin America. Honestly, there were operational things. So India for Grunenthal is, for example, a no-go. So we have no resources, we have no experience. Um, Japan is not a country for Grunenthal. Um, 
And if you go to Latin America, operationally, you have really sometimes problems to get the trial up and running. It's not because it's not feasible and possible. It takes really time to get this up and running. OK. So, and as well, we would like to understand which drugs are used and how effective do they manage their pain. Um, so it seems opioids work as best. Um, acetaminophen, paracetamol, less effective, which is clear from the mode of action. Um, and the interesting thing is as well, so only 10% of this group have participated in a clinical trial, which is, again, the picture that we have seen here. So, um, yes, there is a high need. Um, there is research out, out in the world, but only a small proportion knows about clinical trials, and they have participated in a clinical trial. So the experience is less. Um, and again, we had this this morning as well. Um, how would they like to be informed? So by booklets, text messages to be retained in the trial, get information um, yeah, about the next visit, um, and so on, calls. So personal communication is key here as well. OK. This is honestly the end. <laughs> um, I would simply say, yes, we, we, so the paradigm in, in our industry has changed. Um, so from, let's say, a more yeah, drawing board design um, for clinical research to more patient-centric design. So we are starting our design. So you see all companies who were present here going for this patient approach. Um, different ways, different strategies, but the idea behind it is the same. So to have the patient as our customer um, and not really, um, let's say, the intermediate, the physician. So we need to understand where you're coming from. The other, the, let's say, the other unfortunate news is, even if we do this, our protocols are not less complex, because we are still trying to answer many questions in one protocol. So I've learned, let's say, from my scientific point of view, <coughs> if you have a question, answer them one by one. Um, but of course, we are enterprises, so we have to balance um, investment versus knowledge gain. OK. Thank you so much. If you have questions. Thank you. Um, as we start already, so let's say with small patients group, but collecting this data um, was really helpful for the whole organization. And we make use of this constantly. Um, so you go back to the data all the time? I wouldn't say all the time because, More but it's some it's fresh. This, this information is really fresh. Um, so we use it, and I think we will use it during the next two years with the information that we get as well from the running clinical trials. So there we compare, is it really the case, and all these things. I think we've talked today about ideas and what we should implement during, the, um, during a clinical trial process in terms of maintaining patient centricity. And I haven't heard, and I've heard the question asked as well, much coming back in terms of what you've seen as a return on your investment. So spending the time to do this, how do you measure the impact? Do you, because we're focusing on a single s study here or... Um, a s on a bunch of trials, so it's... On yeah. a bunch of trials, but do you see any, um, any impact um, as a result of carrying out this approach? So as, as we are starting, so um, let's say the, the last project, so the program is in the starting phase um, and the, the first project, we are currently conducting the first trial. So here we see whether it pays out or not. So, and we are controlling and checking whether really it's the case. But I cannot give you, a, for the time being, data because I don't have them. So, yeah. And return of investment, what does it mean? Um, so yes, we invest here, but where does it pay out? Immediately for the trial or in long term for getting the drug as soon as possible on the market? So one KPI is probably the number of protocol amendments. As you know, today there is always you know, changes in protocol. So it'd be good to see with your upfront investment if you stick to your protocol. Yes, I hope so, yeah. so clearly. But And the other one would 
of course, would be um, <clears throat> to see how fast um, or how much feedback you will get out of this um, community of potential patients that filled yeah. in the survey. So what is the ratio of people that will be um, maybe recruited then later yeah. on for a study? And maybe also, um, based on your general planning, how long the recruitment phase would be to compare then, you know, with do we have a better ramp-up phase in the clinical yeah. trial? And maybe also how much, um, how many patients will be recruited per site? Yes. Especially in that area where maybe you have heat, heat maps from. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.